I would have been afraid of my life to go to a manager over my career and say, "Can I, I we have the weekend after? Like, if if he finds out I'm going away for the weekend oh, to yeah. out foreign or something, he's like straight away they're thinking." I'm automatically thinking they're saying you're not looking after yourself that's not what you should be doing you're not recovering but mm. like you see professional rugby players through social media I you see God, professional man. soccer players as soon as they get a couple of days off get away refresh with their partner whoever it is you know come back and they're ready as you said there you're appreciated more the following week when you come back mm. and you'll be re- mentally refreshed Hello hello and welcome to The Hurling Show Last week I was Billy Nomates here, I had two people coming in, uh, Kevin Morn and uh, Derek Holan, they were coming in from afar, but I'm delighted to be joined in studio this time, uh, Michael Carton, former Dublin hurler, uh, a nemesis there for a while, <laughs> yeah, as, he, yeah. as, he took, I, as he took <laughs> us over from 2007 or 8 on, and I'd like to be joined as well by Paddy Maher. Paddy, uh, yeah, I suppose you're, you're, you're coming up from a performance, but didn't come away with what you were looking for. No, dear, I suppose... Um Big improvement on the Clare game now, mm. to be fair. Uh, I suppose a lot of people at home weren't, I suppose, overly pleased with the performance uh, against Clare, you know. But uh, in fairness to Les, they, they answered it back there um, yesterday, you know. And just pure honesty and endeavour and hard work. And look, for an hour, look very well. And, you know, they, they look very strong and just ran out of gas, I think, for the last 10 minutes. And Limerick kind of upped it a small bit as well, didn't they? Like, Yeah, yeah, they did, definitely. How's all in the hurling stronghold of Dunboyne? Is that where you are these days, <laughs> Mike? Am, yeah, I'm out there 12 years now, Gizzy, so it's... Out with the big ball, f- uh, yeah, the big ball <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting a bit of stick being a dub and made, but... Uh, er, there's plenty of you, I think, anyway. There? There's plenty of you out oh, there. Absolutely, there's loads of dubs out there, but uh, no, the kids have joined the club and it's a bit of crack. And yeah, are you playing? I, a few more. I played last year, but I tried to play, but I couldn't stay on the pitch long enough now. The old hamstrings gave way, so... Did you play senior or junior? Senior, or you... yeah, I gave it a lash for a year, but... I was wasn't much used to be honest with you. It was more frustrating than anything else. So yeah. I called it a day at the end of this year. So yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. my body gave up. We just had was carrying too many knocks over the years. Well, so. I mean, going back senior, like we're not thinking maybe if you went back playing junior and like you know warm well, your I, way I, into I, it, I, or I, straight I, back into senior. Yeah, like, even in, like, like, it doesn't matter where you are. Like senior hurling anywhere is yeah. is, is is a decent standard. Like. Yeah, and I didn't know honestly. I had no clue of the standard of mid hurling. Like so, mm. I was surprised. That, like it was much better than I thought. Yeah, um, I was enjoying it while I could stay on the pitch, but just. Look, you know, over the years, and and from not playing for a year and giving everything up, I just the ham hamstrings wouldn't hold up. So yeah, yeah, had to call it a day again. Nice, <laughs> that's uh, it. Your no, second, your second yeah. retirement. It'll be here. management in a few years than yeah. golf. Yeah, <laughs> and it starts with the youngsters. Like yeah. You've got two. You've two young kids. Yeah, you? so and they're both in the nursery, and so I'm enjoying going out and doing a bit with them. And um, they need more hurling coaches. So I said that's that's going to be my place for the next few years. Do they know? Do they know the like? Are they? Would, are you showing them games every night of your your your, <laughs> your old your old feats on the field? Like no, like uh, to be honest with you, my my six year old is uh, he's very laid back and. When he's out that's, hur- that's very surprising. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> when he's out hurling, I'm trying. Like, I'm, I'm so competitive. Sometimes I wish I wasn't as competitive as I am. And yeah. he'd be saying, Daddy, he scored a great goal. And I'm like, but you're the goalkeeper. <laughs> you, have to, yeah. <laughs> you have to try and... I know it's a great goal. He's, you know, there's no egos and kids. And yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get a bit more edge into him, but that will come. <laughs> you know, he's, en- he's enjoying it. <laughs> what age is he? Six. <laughs> I can't help it's it. I can't help it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't be that parent on the sideline roaring and shouting at them. To yeah, yeah. Do and then there's on the other side. Like, say, I often wonder about that. Like, it, there's, you know, the extremes are like Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, all of these people who are like primed from a young age, and then yeah. they seem to at a total uh, disadvantage to maybe other aspects of their, like their childhood. Yeah, just absolutely. A, having a childhood, but it's like leaving them figured out for themselves versus pushing them and there's a kind of a line there's a little balance there to be found because you do like I was pushed a little bit uh, but v- very much in a way that was more of an invite than a push like yeah. you know it was a lovely it was a, it was a, it was a nice balance but gee it's not easy to find it like no and my dad like I was lucky I had a huge support network all my family came to all my games and look my dad played for Dublin for over 15 years and he mm. knew what it was about but he'd also say to you, like, you think you'd have a good game, and you'd be like, what happened to that ball in the 68 minute? <laughs> he oh, got yeah. edged off. Because you'd love that. But always you? that little bit. But, like, uh, I'll be trying to find the right balance with him. Yeah. Because when you see the Tiger Woods and all, they sort of seem to resent their parents. And all yeah, these. yeah, yeah. I don't want them to hate me, so I'll just... No, once he's enjoying it, and he just keeps it up. And it's one of the base rules of parenting. You just hope that your kids don't hate you. Yeah. <laughs> what, about, <laughs> what about for you, Paddy? What was, it, what, was it, what was it like starting off? Were you pushed, or was it always just something you went off and did yourself, kind of, or...? I suppose a gentle nudge is what you call it, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was kind of dropped off in the in, in the juvenile club at five or six years of age on a Saturday morning. That was it, and it was yeah. a regular occurrence then every Saturday morning. Like, but uh, 
Yeah, would they go to the games? Like would they, they would. Both my yeah. parents were, I suppose, highly involved. Both their families, my mother and my father's side, would have been um, strongly linked with the, with the club at home in Turles. So mm. um, I think it was only one direction. I remember asking my father, could I go up uh, soccer training one day with the local club? And I was just giving a look. <laughs> and he says, no, you have hurling training. That's simple as that. I mean, the like, fact that you had to ask him kind of says, <laughs> yeah. says enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I always had that battle look, as the well. The look was yeah. the answer, and yeah. Yeah, you knew from there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three to four thousand. I'm just wondering, as you're, as you're talking about the, the performance at the weekend, there seemed to be a lot more grit from Tipperary. And I, I, I saw that there was, I saw a, a tweet that you'd put up about the, the support. And I know that those things are taken out of context as well and, and can be done so very easily. But... Was there is there a bit of defiance for maybe a lack of support in a performance as well? Like to feel like maybe the, when you're winning all Ireland, there's you know you could you could sell out Crow Park a couple of times, and then all of a sudden you know things don't go so well. I, I often re- heard it remarked about how fantastic the Wexford Harland fans were, and I and I felt when things were really bad was when we needed them most, and there could have been you know a thousand at a game, and you'd be kind of and and and, and the thousand who'd be there would be pure pure frustrated with you. So there is. I understand the responsibility of performance. You have a responsibility of performance to be churning out something that's that's tolerable to the spirit of Wexford hurling or Tipperary hurling, and maybe maybe fans feel that that's not there at the moment. But there definitely was. These are the strongest shoots now that I've seen uh, probably this year for for Tipperary to say, "No, this is this is actually heading in a in a, in a good direction." Like, yeah, you know, definitely. Like, and I suppose to tweet that coming out again because. I I just thought I thought it was unbelievable that the you know even when Tipperary got a few scores, it was very quiet like around. But um, mm. but look, there's other aspects too, and there's different things that are going on in people's lives, or whatever. But um, yeah, but look at the first day against Waterford, like was it was a decent performance, like and it gave a lot of people hope. So mm. like just I suppose it was disappointing after the Clare game, and as you said there, there is there is a responsibility, I suppose, in performance and players giving giving it their all, like you know, and I'd say a lot of the players weren't too happy leaving the Clare game, you know. With performance and the effort and and everything that goes with it, so um, but look, in fairness, they redeemed themselves last or uh, yesterday, and they done, you know, they were fantastic there for an hour, like you know. So, like, hopefully the 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 supporters at home will see that look, the younger lads now are after getting that bit better there, and yeah, they're getting yeah. experience every day and day out. They're getting great experience, and I guess there was unbelievable experience against the All Ireland champions, you know. So, um, look, as you said, there's good green shoots there, like you know, st- loads of stuff to work on there. So, um. Yeah, I think there's a lot of positives coming away from the Gaelic grounds yesterday now, to be honest with you. Yeah, there was, uh, I think, around 27,000 at the game and maybe, I don't know, was it three or 4,000 from, from, from Tipperary? Um, the experience that those young fellas are getting in front of what are a very vocal um, and based on where I now watch most of the games is Paddy O'Shea's. I head off down to Paddy O'Shea's <laughs> on a Sunday to watch the games, which is a, a lovely benefit to this job. Um and there's plenty of Limerick supporters that are, that are down for a while and they're very vocal uh, and they're probably different to a Kilkenny supporter who would have been used to looking at winning and having this kind of dominance. So the lads who are getting experience uh, at the weekend are getting, like, it's, it's it's fire and brimstone in terms of what Limerick, like, not only the Limerick hurlers, but the whole Limerick train that comes into town is, like, it's intense, like. Yeah, you know, they're very passionate down there in Limerick, aren't they, like, no matter what sport it is, like, you know, and mm. I'm working down there, so I, I'd see it firsthand. So, um, but yeah, they do make the Gaelic grounds a real cauldron, you know, the la- last number of years, especially when they're getting a bit um, successful there, you know, win the few All-Irelands the last few years. So, um, but yeah, Limerick was always hostile ground to play in, especially when you're playing against Limerick. Yeah. They yeah. really make it, you know, they talk about 16th men in, 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 in sport in different terms, you know, but they definitely do have it there in, in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick, you know, so it does make it a bit harder, but like, as I said, a great experience for the younger mm. tip lads yesterday, like, you know, especially when they were, you know, probably on top there for an hour, like, you know, and mm. I was sitting back thinking, geez, lads are going to pull this off, like, yeah. um, you know, but, you know, Limerick got one or two pints back, got the game level and the Limerick roar started to come into it and it makes an awful difference, like, but at said, that time, it's yeah. just it's very small times, like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, as I said, the Limerick crowd was going behind them and, you know, gave them that bit of a pep in their step and when they needed it most, like, you know, so, um, but yeah, look, I suppose great experience to, for them younger lads in, in mm. front of a, a big hostile crowd like that like yeah hostile crowd <laughs> it's, it's funny because I know you're a fireman Mike but what I was thinking when you were talking about that is when you're like when you're lighting a fire and it, uh, sometimes it only takes if you're not using fire lighters if you use fire lighters easy going but if you're light, lighting a fire and you're kind of working on it and there's, it only takes certain times it only takes one little small addition a tiniest piece of wood to catch fire and then 
the whole the, ho- the whole thing yeah. goes and it's like that's the that's the benefit of a, of the crowd it's like it's all even Stephen like you know things are there's not too much difference you just need that one little thing and if the crowd come in at the right time when it got to 61 62 there was a, there was I remember Hegarty had the ball out on the wing he was kind of messing around it a little bit but it was a beautiful move it ended up coming inside I think one two with Morrissey and I looked at a couple of the Limerick or Tipperary players and they went and kind of half went and you could see a tiredness was there in the decision making right on that time I think uh, Declan Hannan came up and got a point at that time as well and it was just it was just a, a very very small swing and that was like the little the bit, the bit of tinder that they needed and from there that was it Yeah no, really, I think I remember the, the, the moment you're on about there and, and Grode Hegarty kind of he attracted five or six of the Tipperary lads Yeah he kind of slipped and they went yeah. in and then uh, a nice little pass out to Tom Morris you know I think he had advantage but Tom Morris hit over and I think that really drove on the crowd and then Declan Hannan stood up like a captain does and yeah. and came up the field and got a big one to put him two up I think yeah. so um, that really got the as you said there lit the crowd and yeah. I said to you that just gives everyone you know if you're if you're on the team that that's you know if you're on the Limerick team at that moment in time then you're just you're six foot tall you're after growing another couple of inches and you know no matter if you're, you're struggling up to that the confidence is rising and the crowd is behind you you know so um, if you're on the winning team that's a great feeling to have yeah, at that stage it is when things are going well uh I s- f- we'll go back to the Limerick game definitely Michael but just wondering where about Dublin are at you've been at you've been at at least a couple of games yeah. you were down in Wexford I heard reports from <laughs> the, the main strip in Wexford that you were down a couple of weeks ago uh, but yeah where 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 do, you, where do you see them at the moment I mean they're sitting on top they were always going to be I suppose people probably expected Wexford maybe to beat them below but yeah. they were definitely going to get the four points uh, from Leash Westmead but now they're facing into Galway Kilkenny where are, where are you at? Yeah, it's 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 tough to even know at the moment, is because like as I said, the first three, the first two games I was expecting wins. Wexford, I didn't know after watching Wexford and Galway, I didn't really know how Dublin would stand up. Um, I was impressed with them in Wexford Park. They hurled well, had more of a system than they've had in they previous did, yeah. games. I've watched them, um, but again, Wexford didn't hurl great and could have pegged them back at the end. Mm. And then I went straight from that game to watch the Limerick and Waterford oh, game, sure. and it was just chalk and cheese to be honest yeah. with you. The intensity, the scores. And I left that worried then. That, that night I was worried again for Dublin, even after coming from a win against Wexford. Because again, we don't know much about Wexford either at the moment. So it's hard to gauge where you're at, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It really is hard to gauge. Yeah, respects, it is. Now, they're hurling well. They've three wins from three. But again, you're you're going into Kilkenny and Galway now. So they need, they need a win from one win from them two games. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's set up for the last round yeah. really for Leinster, isn't it? It's going yeah, to be well, look, Kilkenny in Parnell Park. I can't wait for that one. So... That's like Dublin are good at making Parnell Park a tough place to go and win. So yeah. they, they'd be confident going into it. Maybe if Kilkenny came off of having gotten the free or have, having give, been given the benefit of the doubt for the last free yeah. and maybe knocked it over the bar, they've got a win against Galway up in Galway and yeah. things are maybe rosier in the camp. Whereas I can imagine the week after that Galway game, uh, I'd say Kilkenny have had it. They'll, they'll have had a tough, like they'll be going up to Dublin with a little bit more of a marker to sit down than maybe had it gone the other way. You know, Kenny are a county for me that mental strength they have in abundance. Mm. I never really see them drop their heads, no matter who they're playing or, or, or prior results. They yeah. bring it all the time. Like It's very seldom you get a win and you, you get away from them by seven or eight points, no matter how they're playing. They, they have an inner belief in themselves and they're very mentally strong. And Of all the counties, they have that the most for me. Um, so I don't think last week will... Cody be driving it into them now that they need a game, need to win this game against Dublin. So, I think they'd be more, more ferocious than ever, really. To be honest with yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, back to the game against, uh, or back to the Limerick game, Paddy. There's one. I don't know how. I I, I think Aaron Gillan. Um, and I was trying to f- kind of formulate this in my head yesterday. I, Aaron Gillan, in some respects, typifies the spirit of what Limerick have achieved in that. I reckon he's. I think most people would say he's probably the best, the best forward in the country at the moment. Or you know, he he he's leading the charge. Like there's no doubt about it. And he was prolific again at the weekend. And then he was also involved in a little bit of controversy and you know a, a possible red card. Brian Gavin was saying today that he definitely would have sent him off for it. Um, that's neither here nor there in some respects. But he's not. He's not the the darling forward of hurling, and we'll say in the same way that Henry Shefflin would have been. It's like the GA hasn't taken him into his bosom, and you don't see him up in front of everything, and he's not selling places out. You know, in whatever way those fellas do it. But in some respects, I like that because it typifies maybe what John Kiley, what his charge was at the very start of his revolution, was to say, 
we're going to throw everything out. We don't care if we're the darlings. We don't care. We don't want to be in the bosom of anybody. We don't want to be liked necessarily by anybody. We're going to play on the edge. And Aaron Galan plays on the edge. Uh, and can you like him or, or, or load him? That's just, that's just the way he does it. Yeah, you know, I suppose he is one of the, probably up there, the leading top forwards, isn't he, at the moment? And uh, yeah, but... Um, you know, you, you need that bit of bite in you too, don't you? Like, you know, the kind of mm. type of like, like Ray Keane kind of thing, like, don't yeah. you? But um, look, I'd say the Limerick lads are loving having him on the team because, you know, he's able to win the ball either way and inside and full forward line. Uh, he shows leadership like yesterday, you know, scoring two important goals at important stages as mm-hmm. well, but early on the game and late in the game. And then that bit of bite now, whether he goes over the top at times or not, that's debatable, that's debatable there. But for me, if I was on the team with him, you know, I'd be saying, you know, that's great. Like maybe, you know, just watch it a small bit in case you do. Someday you will get caught and we're down to 14 in an important game. But you know, personally, I like that bit of bite in, 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 in a forward, yeah. especially because they do get, you know, rough treatment at times. You expect I, it from a back, but yeah. it's having, having the forward is, is a rare thing. Exactly, like. yeah. Like, you know, and, um, you know, they have enough to be putting up with full backs and cornerbacks, <laughs> pulling and dragging out of them, you know, day in, day out. So they have to be able to look after themselves too. And this goes back to when I was playing there, like, when I started out my career on Kelly was a great man like that oh you know he was geez. fabulous he skillful was hurler fierce. but he was you know tough as nails well able to well, well able to you know look after himself as they say on the pitch you know yeah. so um, I think all the, the great forwards have that have that in them um, it's just don't let your team down and go over the line it, that's, that's the only thing you know but watching him because sorry like as a defender I was saying to myself how would like, how would I approach it he's I've seen Jackie Tyrrell saying oh, I'd stay behind him because mm. there's nothing worse as a, as, a, as a defender when you cough flat foot and you know he's behind you because yeah. you're half trying to find him and put your hand mm. up and you're wide open from the catch it yeah but if you don't stand in front of him he's so pacey like yeah. you can't yeah. you can't allow you can't stand behind him and allow him to run the corner his movement is so good he gives a little jink and he's gone to the far corner so he's so hard like yeah. you're saying to yourself he'll score four points like a shot if you stand behind him all the time yeah. you have to sort of take a chance and yeah you know, it's a bit of a game of chess, so I'm going to try and stand to the wing. Like, I'd sort of be saying to myself, I'm going to stand on the left-hand side of him and just... I know there's an option there, but there's players on the right-hand side. It might just give me that little bit of an edge. Yeah. But you can't you can't either be left in front of him. You, you used to be a, a devil for it. Like, you'd love to get behind and just put the right paw up and, you know, yeah. you're left yeah. wide open as a defender, so... He's kind of playing it as a, as a, as a back man. Yeah, he kind of exactly. Like, you know, he's yeah. trying to play as a back, you want to be behind the yeah. forward and just flick. Yeah. So you know, like, but uh, if you as you're saying there, Mick, if you stand in behind him, then Limerick are so good at placing the ball in front of him into space. Mm. You know, he's able to make the run. And like, what do you do? You, do you concede right? At least I'm going to concede here as a point. But or else I'm trying to read it better than him. But he's very probably one probably the best in the country at coming behind you. Like you know, just yeah. last second using his elbow, all all fair and square. Like I I would say, like you know, but a nightmare for a defender there and. I think everyone will. Everyone he'd be worried now going forward. That I can't get caught here in front of Aaron Glenn. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're very good. Now I don't know. The first one was a miss hit by Jeremy Burns. Well, that's the thing. If the ball is handed out to Jeremy Burns, he's 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 seventy odd yards out. Like I was just thinking, right, this is the point for Jeremy Burns. Yeah. Off we go. Like, but so drop short. What what position are you? If you're in and you finished up close enough into the square to know, like. She, was it who, who was underneath them? Uh, Seamus Kennedy. Seamus Kennedy was under then the then first one. Cahill Barrett was in there in a the second, yeah. but the first one in particular. Uh, what position are you taking up when 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 that's coming in? Because I felt with Kennedy. Well, I, before I tell you what I feel, yeah, where would you where where would you be taking? What position would you be taking with him? Well, personally myself, I always felt naturally that I'd be always kind of just either shoulder to shoulder with the forward or just a slight bit, a bit behind him. You know that kind of way. Yeah, I suppose keeping your body closest to the goal as possible. But um, look, at that's it. I suppose look, you have to be kind of wary that the ball could could drop short, yeah, or the ball could hit the post and drop down. So you have to be prepared for all them. But like I said, usually Tim Burns getting the ball, you're kind of thinking, right, this is either going over the bar or to go wide. But he'll have fifty yards left in the shot. Right, like exactly. there's going to be no, there's going to be no. Yeah. It's not going to go short. Like so, yeah, there's not many he's missed. Yeah, like. but it's actually fun. It's gas. Like when I was watching it back last night, you can see it from the angle behind the goal that. When Dimmer Burns got the ball, Aaron Galan actually put his hand up in he the did, air and was actually right. like, hit he it did, into me, yeah. hit it into me. Yeah. And he actually missed it yeah. and he was still inside behind in, on the edge of the square. Like, and, you know, he's just so good at it. Like, and he's actually, he's right on the line of the square. He's very good to actually stay out of the square, but just just on the edge of it, like, you know, and, yeah. you know, so. Um, but I, don't, I don't think that you would be playing the ball as much. That's, that's what, I, what I felt with Seamus a little bit. It was like, 
I mean, he's not green. You know, he knows he's, he knows the game inside out. Like, but the full back, I expect he's he's as and you do get away with it. Like, you're playing the man as much as you're playing the ball, and that involves blocking that run. If I see a fella going and he and he's going to stand under a ball, and if he's going with the hurl straight forward, like I'm just laughing inside. Yeah. I'm delighted because I've got me three steps. I'm gonna. I'm going to be three quarters the way up on my hang time above him when he starts to jump, which is going to keep me suspended for that extra fraction of a second. And then you're hitting the ball at the pinnacle of your jump. Like it's, but the, 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 I suppose the hurlers who just didn't really accept that kind of behavior from you, <laughs> who I would expect you to have been one of them, played my run in. Like you just, it's a, the, that little bit of cuteness like JJ now he's trying to get a jump yeah. up and catch a ball over Jay. Uh, joke. Like, you know, he he's not playing, he's not playing the ball but he's just playing your run as well as playing the ball. It's a little bit, there's a, there's a subtle difference there that I, I was surprised, I suppose, that, that he that he, that he was let to get get the three steps and a jump straight in front of goal, you know. Yeah, you know, and I think he, he actually looked for another penalty at one stage, uh, Carl Barrow went to flick it away but, I think you have to be very caref- careful. Um, That's right, yeah. You have to be very careful. I think Peter Duggan for Clare, was it against Tip? He actually won a penalty for, you know, yeah. the full back oh, maybe overplaying right, him. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And, you know, now he maybe milked it a small bit, but he still, you know, probably got, felt the hands on him, so he went down, yeah. got the penalty. Like, I think forwards... So that's are, changed a little bit, has yeah. it? They're, 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 on to the for- they're on to the full back doing that more. Exactly, yeah. Like, if you're not watching the ball as a backman, I'd say the referee's thinking, you're 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 playing the man here. And so, again, it's the, it's the difference of the small bit of, right, where's my man? But then, as you were saying, Mick, I have to keep my eye on the ball here as well, like, you know, because... Um, you know, uh, there was another incident there. Aaron Glenn actually jumped up behind Cottle Barrett in the first half, and the ball fell out of his hand. Yeah. And Tip managed to scramble back. So there's only a few small small things there that could have been, you know, he could have easily had three goals. But he's just he's just so good at getting the leap behind you and pinning yeah, you down. Yeah. As a backman, he's just he's so good at pinning you down with your elbow with the elbow just to keep you onto the ground. Barrett was saying he played the hurl, but it was yeah. he just kind of he, he was already up and he was he was just resting on him more than you could see it in the slow mode and, yeah. and, and the television screen actually after this. He just used his elbow just to give him a little nudge up and look. I don't think it's a free like it's just. Do you know, it's yeah, it's yeah. been cute, like you know. Yeah, it's frustrating when you're a back for it. Oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> well, um, Gillan, was he over the? Was he was that? Was he over the mark? Did you think with the pull or was it? No, like when I seen Brian Gavin's comments, I was laughing because I used to love him as a ref. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he let yeah, you yeah. Away from He yeah. never gave cards, so I was, I was laughing at him saying it was a definite red. Look, for me, if it was a red card, I wouldn't be giving out. But a same on the same thing with a yellow, there was an intent there. It was a dirty strike, but. I've seen them loads of times in hurling matches over the years, and it doesn't bother me that it was a yellow card. Like I, I was happy enough with, the, with, with it being a yellow, but it was a dirty stroke, and we know he has it in him. I like that sort of part of his game as well, though. So yeah, uh, no, I was content enough it was a yellow because I think he half pulled out when he knew he wasn't get there, and it was just a dirty stroke. It that's why that's why the hurl went flying, isn't it? They've done yeah. that. I've been in that boat a few times as well. You know, you're going in, and then at the last second, you know, you're late, and you let you let loose like yeah. So the hurl flies. You're, you're getting across the wrist yourself, so you're just going to let go of the hurl and. Yeah, it looked worse from the front angle when I seen it from behind. I said, "I know, was happy enough for it to be yellow." Yeah, yeah. I, don't uh, know, I think I think deep down, Ronan in, might say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, I want to see the American yeah, in this morning." Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I think if if it just <coughs> happened, if I think it was Liam Gordon Riffin, if he did show Aaron Galan a red card, mm. I wonder deep down would Aaron say, "Yeah, I yeah. you know I put myself out there for like, you know, but yeah. Yeah. again, like as I said, when t- you slow the thing down. I think it's it's it always looks worse, doesn't it? Like yeah. you know, in real time, I was there. It looked bad, and then the hurley went flying up in the air, so it looked a bit worse. Mm. Um, but like, I just love to know, like, as a player, if you were a tip player now, oh, look, well, ref, why are you giving the yellow card? What's yeah. the yellow card for? Like, you right. know, so just to so see what he'd say. Strike him with the hurl. Like. Is it striking? Then is it a red or? Yeah. Do you know, so um, you're a man of the letter of the law. If, I, if it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm read, I'd be reading. Ah, did he mean to do it? Now he's like, hang on there now. What does the rule book yeah, say? Exactly. Like, you know, what your notebook. Well, that's only if I'm the opposition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like I suppose we were talking a few, a few weeks ago about the setup. Like, how do we how do we set up? And you had plenty of insight into that. What did you see shape wise that Tipperary were doing? Well, who was who was doing it well, and what what were they doing well in terms of shape? I kind of think the tip pushed up, kind of pushed up in Limerick, mm. kind of man for man, like you know, following around the pitch, and it kind of allowed Seamus Kendi was playing at six. He sat back at times to give cover, 
and I think there was one or two instances in the game that the ball was delivered up by Limerick and we'll just say Cottle Barrett and Aaron Galan went to the corner, the far corner of the cover stand at one stage for a ball and Galan was in front but Seamus Kendi was in straight away <laughs> and the two of them swarmed Galan and I think The thing we were talking about I was thinking about the conversation we'd had with remember Cork the first day yeah. there was like two that went and um, one went left one went right and he jinked left and they both went left and it was like the two boys did two that boys perfectly that time in, yeah. one took left one took right and, 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 and they dispossessed them Yeah you know it was perfect and see the lads were pushed up out the field so they were putting pressure on the ball coming in um, now there's one or two instances that stick out in my head that Groad Hegarty got himself a bit loose at times um, Colin O'Neill once or twice but it didn't happen as much as it usually happens Yeah. and um, so I think that was a big difference a tip pushed up and they just they hurled Limerick wherever on the pitch um, you know man for man and I think it was very it was vital then that Seamus Kennedy could sit back now I was just talking to one of the lads yesterday even about it after then it's like it would be different if Keane Lynch was playing centre forward like you couldn't let him give him the space maybe that you could have given the other players. So it just goes to show how important I think he is to, yeah, yeah. to Limerick's, to, as a cog to Limerick's machine there. Was one of the lads there, Ronan yeah. or was it? Oh no, I, I left him alone yeah. now because <laughs> he wasn't in the best of form. No. But um, but no, like I think Tip set up very well um, yesterday, you know, and for a lot of it there kind of showed, you know, they were able to work the ball up to feel themselves tip off the shoulder at times and then they were able to strike the ball in whether it's the number we talked about a few weeks ago that Cork maybe weren't striking that ball in when they got to a certain mm, st- yeah. stage of the field and were giving Limerick a chance to, to turn him back over again. Whereas I think Tip were off the shoulder once or twice yesterday and then they were able to d- give the ball in to space to a forward, you know, and I yeah. think had Dermot Burns, Declan Hannon turn running back towards their own goal a bit, you know, which um, I think is very important if you want to beat Limerick that you need them facing back towards their own goal all the time. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think... Not easily the, done, like... No, yeah. so I think going for man for man with them worked for a lot of it yesterday now you have to be athletic enough and strong enough to stay with him as well and I think Tip probably got tired finishing up which is totally understandable because they poured their heart and soul into it there for an hour like yeah I suppose in in some respects you see when that's the problem I suppose that's what Limerick are playing to as well if you play Limerick's game if you play man to man then they kind of dictate the shape a little bit more and then you look at a result where you sit off them and the half back line midfield come away with you know sometimes they're coming away with 12-13 points between those two lines alone Whereas it was Aaron Galan this time comes away with uh, what they score maybe two three two, two three. four uh, yes. so like that opens up the inside when you do play that so that's that's their ability to kind of t- to play both sides that's the that's the hard part of it that's like. it like and I suppose Aaron Galan's two goals were came from we'll say long balls into him and yeah they have that that's what makes them so good and so strong as well that they have to out ball as he can win the ball inside if needs be like it doesn't have to be this pretty ball. Uh, pushed into the forward line in front of space like um, but when you're going man for man like there will be times the protection might be there you know you, you want it there most of the time but mm. there will be times you, I suppose teams will have to talk about going out with say Tipperary now say right lads you will be man and man here for, uh, once mm. or twice in the pitch you have to be willing to go and beat your man to the ball like mm. and you know but um, no but said you tip. I think Tip got the set up right for a lot of it yesterday you know even their puck outs you know, the movement off the, off the tip puck out, like Joe Brown was getting on loads of ball in the first half. He, oh, he seems like an interesting character, man. What's what's Joe Brown's story? Like, he's, yeah. I, I, like I, I saw, I mean, Jake Morris was coming for a while and you can see this, I think, he's, he three, I think the two of them had three, got three points yesterday, but Joe Brown, for me, is going to come from nowhere and you, from the start, from the start, like he was just, he's like, oh, this fella's going to, he's on fire. Like, you know, he seems if he applies himself, this is this is good. he's going to be a brilliant hurler. Like yeah, he was there. He came, he was on the panel in 2019 with us when we went when we won against okay. Kenny and he came off the bench in a few games that year and he's 22, big, 23. Yeah, he was on, he, he's the 21 All Ireland in 18. Yeah, um, he won 21 All Ireland in 18. So um, look, he brings massive energy, pace. Probably not the biggest and strongest, but like you see there yesterday, he was just he had the Limerick lads kind of you know. I wouldn't say all over the shop, but mm. he had him thinking a lot in the first half there with his movement. He was over and back the field, off the ball, on the ball. He was working back, getting hooks. Like Jer, Jer's an energetic character off the field, and he <laughs> he brought he brought he brought down to the field yesterday, like and scored three points. I think he had two or three wides as well. Like he could have, he mm. gave Dermot Burns a hard time of it now. To be fair with his movement, and um, yeah, but look, he, Jer has massive talent, and he's been. I suppose he went off the panel for a year or two there as well. Um, and he got his chance back this year, and he's he's certainly been been impressive. Take the Clare game and the 
the Limerick game yesterday, and like you have to say, he has he has been impressive this year. Yeah, he has. Um, yeah. It was there was a degree of inevitability that after the hour, as you said, they poured their heart and soul into it. And how do you, you know, keeping that up against Limerick, who are playing at a particular level? I mean, at 61, 62 minutes, and they really kind of kicked in. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how how do you the, the, last year they it was you went down and gave them hell in the first half mm. but everything and then they turned it around in the second half and this this year you got the sense that they maybe extended that out a little bit and they were able to manage Limerick for sixty minutes you know um, so it's headed in the right direction but I don't know Michael yeah to, to keep that. Yeah, to keep that pace up to beat yeah. Limerick when they're as functional and as efficient and in, uh, and and they can depend. Like Tom Marcy comes up and scores three or four points, yeah. so you're not dependent on the same fellas every day. Like he's, they're just they're yeah. Look, there was so like that tip team of Colin Baller and like there was eight lads, like the uh, eight young lads starting. The eldest one was twenty four. The rest were twenty three and twenty two mm. starting in championship against the All Ireland champions. Like it's a very tough tough ask. And uh, like Paddy said earlier, I just love the honesty. You know, when a young lad comes yeah, into your panel, yeah, yeah. they're they're bullish. They're out to prove a point. There's no fear of who they're playing, or they're just a hundred miles an hour. You now, what they need a little bit is maturity. That you know, stepping up into into county is a big, big difference mm. from under twenty one and and even club senior. So, I, I thought they were going to struggle for the last ten minutes, ten minutes myself. Like they were, I was so impressed with them, just how the endeavour of it. Like you know, and yeah, like yeah. you don't see it, people taking it to Limerick like they did. Do you know, and like you have to push up in their half forward line, and like the likes of Jerry Brown, he just he had a few people marking him. You just found that space in the lines and Limerick, the half back line, like to sit back. They don't like to be pushed pulled left and right. And mm. um I just loved the way he, he was going across that line and, and I was also impressed with Barry Hogan. I thought his book out some distribution, distribution was brilliant. Was like class, he, yeah. Yeah. he found them all the time. He wasn't given fifty fifty balls because to that tip forward line, like some of them aren't great with their hands, but their movement is excellent. Yeah. So like with Stakelum and Brown, mm. you have to if you give them that ball, that they were fine in the space and they were tenacious and it was enjoyable to watch, but Michael Breen just missed the score around the 60th minute and then they went up and Boylan got a goal and it just, as you said, with the crowd and inexperienced team of tip, it was going to tell, take its toll, I found. like And look, the score difference wasn't I mean, was, wasn't right on the there team. There was two, three goal chances. Like, there was one, like, Michael Breen... Is, he could have four. Know, the yeah. ball, he could have had four The ball dropped at one stage. I just thought he had to, like, if he'd have just came straight through it and pulled, yeah. he had to... Didn't have maybe I just couldn't couldn't believe it bounced yeah. at, his, at, his, at his feet where it was. But even if you get two out of four, like you're in for a different finish. Yeah, and like. I think uh, I think it was Nash just came across and he thought he was going to get hooked, so he miss hit the first one, and then the second one was like boiling, it's just a little flick, you know. And he had two of them that that could that could have went in easily, you know. Yeah. Just I think with tips sometimes, like they had nine wides throughout the game early enough, and I was just thinking, give the ball to McGrath, like you're you're known scorers because when he looked up, he was in space for about four of them. Yeah. Just a 20, 30 yard pass, and all McGrath rarely misses. He missed one in the second half from a tight angle, but throughout the game, he's so accurate. And I just think with tips, sometimes when they're under pressure, find your scorers. Yeah. I've always preached it like just find the lads who are gonna in the right position. And I think, I think they're about an hour, an hour gone, an hour gone, with, yeah, about 10 or 12 minutes left. The game was a draw, I think, with tip. So either a draw or tip up by a point, but they had three chances. They missed, they dropped three wides in a row, I think. Mm. And that was just saying, like, yeah. a bit of experience there, like. Nail, nail one or two of them and you're just keeping them at arm's length a small bit every time like you were always putting two or three points between it and I think I think Noel missed a 65 or a free I can't remember I think Conor Bow came on missed a had a wide as well and there was one more as well I can't remember it quietly but uh, did if you said if two or three of them, if two of them went over you'd be keeping them just nudging them back the whole time and it, on the opposite side in Limerick executed very well in the last 10 minutes 12 yeah. minutes like you know so that just it comes experience again, like you know, and that was stand to the younger lads as well, like. And is that the experience, like, because I think the wides counts against Limerick each day. We're looking at them; the wides counts against are, are are significantly high, and it comes down to the choices that lads are making, the the, the positions they're shooting from, and their their body shape, uh, like working the ball into situations where the statistics, like the statistics are high for scoring versus. There's a chance there, but it's yeah, you have to you have to learn that you have to learn to play those. Uh, percentages like that's 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 a that's a thing of years like that's a thing of experience in in, in cauldrons I think yeah you know and like Limerick are renowned for getting the most shots off a goal in every game like you know mm. they could have up to 40 45 shots mm. a goal every game um, now I think at tip at half time yesterday I was just reading on Twitter at half time that someone had up to tip actually had more shots a goal in Limerick in the first half 
but again you still don't want to be taking silly shots as you were saying there yeah. um, but like that's where I suppose Tom Morris he's well experienced now like he could miss two, he, two or three wides but he stayed at it and stayed at it and came up with vital points near the, in the last 10 minutes for for Limerick like you know but again they weren't stupid shots like you know they, they were getting to scoring positions and they were but they're not afraid to take the shots on like you know and that's why they're scoring nearly you know yeah, they're so yeah. economical they're scoring nearly 30 points a game like mm, you're 22 23 and you might have one two wides and all of a sudden the third chance is like you're you're thinking more about getting taken off than you are but yeah when well, it comes a lot of chance, trust like, too I'd say the Limerick lads are like they're so in tune with each other now after four or five years under the same regime same management that they know that they are trust each other that they will shoot from the right positions and yeah. you know they'll pass the ball in the right times to the right per- person right position as well so like there's no one going to get out to you or, or roar the head off you because of a bad decision whereas if you're a younger lad in a team you're only on the panel for a year like some of the tip lads maybe as you said one or two bad options or one or two bad choices and shots you're kind of you're kind of might creep yeah, into yeah, yourself yeah, a bit like you know a bit more. Yeah. that uh, on the energy one of the statistics actually that surprised me the, that that, that uh, energy we're talking about Michael was like the, we're, we're talking every week about <coughs> the turnovers the Limerick turnovers and Tipperary out turnovered Limerick yeah. like they I think that what was it they got one nine, one nine from the wrong puck out. Tip got eight from the wrong puck out. But in possessions lost, like Limerick lost thirty one. Limerick or Tipperary only lost twenty six, and they won. Thir- they scored thirteen points from turnovers, whereas Limerick only scored seven. Like so, that's <coughs> that's a good indication for for where Tipperary are at, but for how we have to play Tipperary or how we have to play Limerick as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, they pushed up on the on the puck outs, and if you make Limerick. If you make Limerick go along, you've more of a chance, you know, and that's what happened. They just didn't allow them play out from the back. Everyone pushed up, and you look, you're leaving your full back line vulnerable, but it's worth the risk against Limerick. You have to, you can't just allow them quirk to find anybody. And, and also with Barry Hogan finding his players, he wasn't just hitting 50 50 balls. Yeah. So the young lads were that, that energetic. They were getting themselves free, which isn't an easy ask because Limerick plays so tight, you know. So there was, there was a bit of, bit of boat in, in, in it, you know. So, yeah. Look, God, the set up of the forwards, the yeah. forwards. You see that on, on the Sunday game last night, like almost like a line, line. up the middle. Like yeah. it came into football a few years ago, and you could see it's this. I um, I don't know, is it? Maybe it's maybe it comes. From, I'm not sure where it came from, but you could definitely see it. I remember Kieran talking about it as well, like just bunch in himself, Matty Ford, and whoever else happened to be kind of in there. And it was like there's no there's no positions once it comes in. But now we're into a stage with. Uh, in hurling where it's like the half hour line the full forward line are both just tied yeah. in coming out as a back like I mean it must be a dream yeah, but, to play out to yeah well Cork used to do it with us as a forward line they'd all line up in the middle of the pitch and mm. like what, what myself and Stephen Hoyne would do is no matter what I'm going left I'm not going sprinting across the pitch yeah. and switching you know, it's it's a different thing if if, if Morrissey and Gerard Hegarty go right yeah. you know <laughs> but but it's worth taking a chance I don't think you can leave that space to, for them to run into just because of the pace they have in the half forward line and yeah, it like, was tracked at one stage. Yeah. I was trying to see. I was, was it, no, was it Dylan, Nash was Dylan, standing Co- on the wing. It was Dylan Cork, something. I think, at one stage. Just showed it. It was a, oh, a run that went across. Hager TV went across and then backed over. And two went left for a split second yeah. and then kind of corrected themselves. But it was that, like, if they have that. And that comes with time. You played with Heine for a Experience, long time. It's like, exactly. look at, I'm going right, you go left. Yeah. That's it. Like, And it, it, it solves that problem a little bit. But you have to work your way into that. And you yeah, have to, absolutely. You have to lose a few it balls. comes with playing together. Like, like this Limerick team have played together for years. You might have mm-hmm. one or two positions changes or personnel coming in but the majority of them have played together for so long and tip these tip lads loads of them haven't played with each other for any more than one or two games and you have to get to know each other like they got crucified their back line against Clare but for me it wasn't lack of effort or it was just a bit of na- naivety yeah. they were running up and they were on top of each other and they weren't saying oh Paddy's going there I'm going to pull back a little bit and that, that comes with time and experience so I never thought it was as bad as people were saying because they're so young and inexperienced. They just need time, you know. Yeah. Plus, they they'd, they'd, time they'd come off a good performance against exactly. Wallen too. They weren't going exactly. to be, yeah, they weren't, they weren't disasters overnight. Um, I suppose, the, yeah, the, what the, the the word the, the limification of hurling, like the, they're temporarily starting out in some respects on that journey, aren't they, towards playing the game the way Limerick played the game, which is now the most effective style at the reason. Everybody is kind of getting up to that, looking for turnovers, pushing up high, follow, deciding whether to follow the man or not to follow the man uh, in, in terms of coming out from the forwards. But but yeah, but you'd, 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 you'd be happy, like. Yeah, you know, coming away, I suppose, I know that someone referenced it yesterday that Tip kind of, Tip kind of, done to Limerick what Limerick do to a lot of teams and that they they bunched mm. out the middle of the field they worked ferociously hard like and I think the big difference yesterday was 
to tip forwards, not that I know we got two or three goal chances, but we didn't convert any. But the forwards are working so hard. They were coming back down the field, the wing forwards, the midfielders are working back. It was bunching up the middle of the field. So mm-hmm. every time a Limerick man was held up and turned, he'd run into another tip man. It's, it's what Limerick do. The, the half forwards, Gold Hegarty, Tom Marcy, are always coming back out when the ball is poked out. They're getting bodies where the ball is landing. And I think Tip were doing that yesterday and they were just getting tackles in. And like, always, it, w- it was funny, like every time I played hurling over the last few years with, with Liam Sheedy as manager, that the, there was tackle figures given up with what, he t- what we needed to hit targets at half time, full time. And more often than that, like, he used to have a target for 100 tackles in a game. Like, and it was, it was gas. Like, every time we hit the target, we won the match. Yeah, no matter yeah, who we're playing, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do you know, and then if you come in and lose, then he put up the figure that you only had 65 tackles and you were beaten by a couple of pints. But like every time, if you were near the 100 or close to the 100 tackle mark um, after the game, you more often than not, we won the game. Like, so like it just goes to show, like, you can have all the, the skill and you know, tactics you have, but like sheer work rate and honesty from the players. And Tip had that for in abundance yesterday for most, most for an hour that game, anyway. And it just proved that, like, put them under pressure, like, and Limerick were turning over the ball, they were dropping the ball, they were, you know, hurly passes that usually stick were going astray. You know, just didn't see themselves, like, you know, maybe they weren't going full belt, you know, a top gear that they wanted themselves, but Tip weren't letting them either, like, because they were working That's hard. That's the other question, it's like, you do see in the, when 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 it's put up to Limerick, they, they hit into this gear that's, like, yeah, it, it's impressive, like, it's absolutely impressive. Uh, it didn't feel like they hit that yesterday. I don't know—is that Tipperary stopping them from hitting it, or were they just a little bit off? And, and, and Tipperary had a good day, and so it makes it it makes it seem closer than it actually is. I I, I don't know. Yeah, I was sitting down watching the match myself live at at the game. You'd be like, our Limerick just don't see themselves there for a while. But like, then I looked at it in, at more like I was like, is Connor Stay coming? These guys were just w- wiring into the Limerick lads. You know, lads that were. Three four inches taller than them, like, and they're just hitting into. Was there much niggling? Like, was there? Were no, they, but it's they... fair. Like, you know, the ball. Like, people are saying the referee gave tip more I mean, freeze. Niggling is, like, niggling but... is fair too. <laughs> like, yeah, just like you know, he's standing on the toes, and you know, you, you can feel him. Like, were they were they in their face that much? Yeah, but or... it was more or less just in play and in, in rocks. Yeah. You know, okay. getting the bodies into rocks. If they were losing the hurley, you know, they were still getting their hands in. You know, they were tackling. They were some of the tackling was cute. I remember Jake Morris at one stage. You know, he put his arms in, but he's let go straight away again and yeah, put him back yeah. in. He was very cute, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and it was making Limerick kind of, you know, either overcarry the ball, which they got caught once or twice, or fumbling the ball or whatever, like, you know, and that's what Limerick do to all the other teams in the, in the county, so, uh, in the country. So um, I just thought Tip had, they put so much energy into that for an hour that, you know, and they probably didn't have the experience, you know, the, the firepower that Limerick have off the sideline, you know, they probably needed finishing up, but... Do you know, there's a lot of positive takeaways there mm. for Tip and probably a lot of, you know, takeaways for other teams and how to, you know, if anyone is going to beat Limerick, that this is what you have to do to try and top them. Now, it didn't work yesterday, obviously, finishing up because they powered on in the last few minutes, but the template is there, really, for teams to... Yeah. This is what you kind of have to do or, or mirror to try and beat Limerick, you know? Yeah, I think for the rest of the teams as well, you just kind of want that idea even of fallibility like you want yeah, to think exactly. that Limerick can be beaten like you know you just get a little do you know if Wexford Dublin you see like if Clare win in Ireland or some, you know uh, a lesser like yeah. wins in Ireland all of a sudden there's hope it's a genie like all you need is the little glimmer exactly, of hope it's exactly, when they look yeah. like they can't be beaten it's just <laughs> it's heartbreaking they I suppose remind, they remind you of Kilkenny back yeah. years ago that yeah. you know sometimes we play Kilkenny there in games and you'd be like Geez, how are we not going to, how do we not win this game like yeah. and it's just I suppose good good teams and champions experience yeah. Just find something at the end of the game to get them over the line, like, and I think Lyric found that in the last ten minutes yesterday. It's that mentality as well. Yeah. They always think, "Oh, we're going to win," Do you know, and that comes with winning all Ireland, and they, yeah. they they win over and over again. So there's no panic, no panic sets in. Whereas you're not winning or you're not it's confident. So clear in some of the in some of the play yeah. yesterday. Who was it in the in the first half? There was a ball came across. You know, Tom Morrissey definitely finished it. There was a pass came from Donovan in midfield, and he and he overhit the pass. And Morrissey went up to catch it and ran over towards the sideline. And when Donovan had it, he was there was two men around him, and he looked like he was out for a Sunday stroll. And they went over to Marcy, and he missed the catch. And you think then you're going over towards the sideline. You got know that feeling when you go yeah, to the yeah. sideline, and you're in front, so you have that bit of pressure. on what am I going? Am I going to turn back? Or a little bit of pressure yeah. comes on, 
I fella looked like he was just out for a game under 12 hurling. Yeah. Like he was just relaxed, picked the ball up, slotted over the bar, yeah. off he went. It's like, God, these fellas are, there's next level composure. Like, yeah, you it's know. a style because after you're watching Tom Morrissey and you're saying, Jeez, he's, he's playing well, but not great, but he's five points in play. Like mm. he's just that nonchalant style, like you're saying. He's, yeah. Like he scored four points yesterday, and for a period of the game, he wouldn't, he wasn't lighting the place up. Yeah. And then you walk away with four points, and he was distribution, distributing yeah. the ball well. Which was another feature of the Kenny team as well, wasn't exactly. it? There was like different fellas that stand up. If Shefflin didn't do it, Martin Comfort to come in. If he didn't, Eddie Brennan would do it. Like different yeah. people stood up at different times. Yeah. Like, and it's just you wouldn't notice him as such. And he was saying like, I, I, I find the, the game's changed so much that like. Like Dermot Burns had three points scored off in the first half. Like, and you'd be thinking to yourself, back in the day, I'm going to get whipped off here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. But it's, it's just the game's changed that they're expecting Dermot Burns now to get up and get a point or two, or he's the free taker and he's not moved. So it's yeah. still the corner backs are, or corner forwards that are getting yeah. called yeah. off. Yeah. off. I remember we, <laughs> we, heard, we heard against that Cork team, I think, I was in the league maybe in 2005, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it might have been the championship actually, and John Gardner came up and got a goal. I think Rory McCarthy might have been wing forward. And, Someone said to him afterwards, like, fair play, you held Gardner to a goal. Like, yeah. it's, like, it's the same with Dero Burns. If he only gets three or yeah. four points, like, exactly. it's not too bad. Like, it's they're unbelievable for it. Um, I suppose Munster is, it's not sewn up, I suppose. Clare have, Clare have to definitely go against uh, against Limerick and then they've got Waterford, but definitely on the other side in Leinster at the moment, maybe the maybe the, the pick standard-wise is probably in, in Munster in fairness, but... Yeah, for excitement now. Uh, there's the, the weekend, this weekend coming. It's a big, big, probably a big game for big, big game for Dublin this weekend. Yeah. But it's going to come down to the last day, I'd say, for for things to figure themselves out. Yeah, it's a massive game because like they've been they've been winning, they've won their last three games, but they haven't been brilliant on the pitch. Like they're they're getting through the games, but nothing spectac- spectacular about them. Mm. I think Maddie Kenny be eyeing up now. Kenny in in Parnell just saying let's give it a lash now and just get a bit of confidence in the players going forward in championship like I don't want to make it a battle make it tough and like we've a good track record in in Parnell Park and yeah it might just answer a few questions a few doubts in the players heads because they, they, they seem to drop every so often and there's that always been that inconsistency with Dublin Hurling that you play a great game you might go out and beat Galway and then Leash might track you back or Antrim and, yeah, and it's yeah. just we have to put that to bed so like the last three games haven't been great, but they've been wins. And I just think if you're getting, sometimes when you get through a championship like that, a bit of confidence grows. And this will be a massive game now for Dublin and, and Maddie Kenny. Yeah. The weekend. So it seemed to be around where you were at probably 2006. I'd say, like you know, when yeah. Stephen Stephen Heine was was coming, Dotsie was coming, McCaffrey, Connell. Like there was something building, but you couldn't. There was two years there where we we had no business beating you, or you, but yeah. you just weren't able to get over that kind of that next step. But once you got over the next step, and then you started dealing with Kilkenny, and you started actually, you know, you started yeah. be beating them. That that tendency that Dublin have sometimes to think, oh, Kilkenny up here, we're exactly. kind of here. Once that's lifted, like then you realise, okay, like on any given Sunday, yeah, even and you, Kilkenny you don't like, carry the fear factor they used to. Like, yeah, like they're good, they're tenacious team, but they're nowhere near what they were. But like, for Dublin, do for for, yeah, yeah. Uh, for a Dublin like for a Wexford, do they? Yeah. Like, well, uh, I found from 2010, 11 on for us that fear factor had sort of gone. Like, yeah. Look, it was a unbelievable like any team you had to play for them years. You know, they probably I think the best team ever. Yeah. But when they started getting a bit older and our younger lads start coming in and they've been beaten to Kenny at minor 21, there wasn't that fear factor there anymore. And you realised, hold on, we can we can beat these. So I think that's in Dublin hurling at the moment where they haven't got that fear factor anymore. It's just more consistency now, do you know? And like Maddie, so you Kenny, think they'll have? Go, can oh, they, they will. They give it a good cut. The they give be. it a good cut because, like, the likes of Chris Crummy and Danny Suck, they've been there. They're, they're mm. good leaders. They're good leaders in, in lines that we need them in. And it's just more like Maddie Kenny had a rebuilding job to do. Yeah. After the, after most of that team that won the Leinster final had gone, and uh, and them lads had been there for that success. So we just think you now it's just time to build on. And I th- I think they'll give Kilkenny a good cut now. Yeah. Disappointing for Rushy. Yeah, look. Sorry, party. Yeah, yeah. Rushy's been in and out. You know, he's just struggling. Like, he, he, he mm. can't seem to get a, a good run of games and he needs it to, to stay is on the team. Dublin need him too. Yeah, like, he yeah. came on at the weekend, I think. And yeah, like the just, and yeah just the hamstring game. again. And so, look, you know yourself for hamstrings. It could be for five weeks, six weeks yeah. more, you know, and then where Dublin at in championships. So, yeah. Um, I, 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 hope, I hope Dublin haven't gotten their head or oh, we still have Galway. You don't want 
like I just like to in Parnell Park beat Kilkenny and have a Leinster final to look forward to you know that's yeah. that's what I think I think it's going to be a ferocious game on Saturday yeah. because like as you said there Dublin kind of have the the carrot of if they win they're, they're the fair chance to yeah. want to go through like they've that'll be their four wins isn't it yeah and, uh, four wins yeah but likewise if they, if they lose then they're playing Galway and Galway want revenge after I think it was 2019 number Dublin knocked yeah. them out was it or, Parnell Park yeah, yeah that's right yeah do you know and and then on the other side of it then Kenny are coming and after being beaten by the pint the last day usually yeah, a Brian Cody yeah. team comes back with you know you yeah. know fire brimstone the whole lot like and they'll throw everything at it which you'll expect so I think it's going to be ferocious in yeah. Parnell Park and like you know I said you, it's a great opportunity for Dublin to have that big result you know back up the Wexford game and uh, that's the big that's the big game of the weekend definitely I mean Leash Galway I, yeah Leash the, the tempo just isn't there yet Westmead Wexford like Westmead have actually had they've had good showings like they've they've done better against the, against the big teams yeah. uh, comparative to Leash and for Westmead really well uh, like if, if you're going up there with any kind of a relaxed idea like uh, you could find yourself in a dogfight very easily like as Dublin found up yeah, there I mean they it was, did. They were back down to three points yeah. and it happened to score five on the bounce but yeah. I don't think we're in a position where we can actually take any game for granted at yeah. the moment you know like watching Wexford again I watched them in the Walsh Cup final against Dublin I thought they were so poor now, again a lot of their starters were missing and mm. I watched them in Wexford Park against Dublin I just they don't seem to have a game plan you know, like I know over the years they've had a sweeper and they, you knew the system Wexford were playing yeah. like, it might not have got them big wins but you knew what they were playing and they, and they all bought into it just I don't really see an identity with Wexford at the moment it's Stop start and then they might bring on Lee Chin for the last fifteen minutes, lifting the crowd. And I just, I'd like to see him start. I'd like to see their best team start. At the, obviously, I don't know why he's not starting or he has a niggle somewhere, but uh, I just didn't see a system that Wexford were playing. To. It was just hit the ball and we might get a few scores. And I, I just they were lacking in both games. I watched them so far this year. So yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, yeah, I think it might be a little bit more nuanced than just hit it and hope. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's as clear as it was. It's yeah, not as clear as it exactly. was. Definitely. Uh, who do you see coming out of Leinster? Then how do you, how do you see that? How do you see that going, Paddy? At the I don't think anybody's too pushed in Munster about who comes out of Leinster no, for some reason. I mean, yeah. I suppose Galway, you definitely are, are, are going to feature, and Kenny, you know what you're going to get. But <coughs> it does seem to all be in yeah, Munster. But if you're when looking in from the outside, who who looks it's like hard? It's actually hard to pick at the moment because mm. like no one's really kind of. You know, standing out performances yet. Like, um, you know, Galway probably very disappointed with the Wexford game the way it finished up. Like they had so many chances to, to put that game to bed. Um, you know, and that 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 result might have them in a bit of bother now come the end of the end of the round robin. But I have to uh, me Galway. I think will come out. Um, yeah. You know, depends. I actually don't know. Like Kenny Dobbin, whoever wins that game, like is 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 in the driving seat as well. But. Um, I just always have. I'm just expecting something big from Kenny the weekend. Um, yeah. To be honest with you, so I kind of expect him to come and then to toss for kind in whatever way results go after that. But um, I think Dublin Wexford are, um, you know, Wexford seem to be struggling a small bit as we were saying there. Like you know, Dublin have that probably a bit bit more about them at the moment. But again, there's two massive rounds left. So um, for me, Galway are kind of leading and Kenny coming after him and then after that then to the toss for kind. Yeah. Yeah. I guess like Wexford are coming out of as you were talking about Michael like a clear identity and they're kind of maybe moving into they're not quite at the stage of like a temporary rebuild but they're coming out of a very particular identity and trying to find a new one whereas Dublin are a little bit in that kind of in your face like hey we're we're coming now and we're yeah. kind of deciding and just yeah they're, they're like head to head there's a point in it that's all that's between them but Dublin got the point yeah. so that's uh, it puts them in the driving seat like yeah it's tough like Wexford have experienced players like mm. you know I, I don't doubt that it's just more or if they find a way to system to play, they they look Wexford can always shock a team, you know. Yeah, you know yeah. that like the, the Yeah, we love good. Yeah, you know, you like you know hoping like no yeah, one part turns into something yeah. like one of those days. Yeah, like, exactly, you do yeah. feel that with Limerick sometimes like at the weekend is like Joe Monster Championship, you're always wondering like and with the round robin is a little bit different because it's you know works in a different system, but you be you might think like Cork or somewhere, you might think Clare somewhere, yeah. and then all of a sudden like this game opens up and it has a life of its own and you just <laughs> you're wondering where the performance came from and, and you don't we're not getting that in the round rock. You can kind of pre predict pretty much all the results so far, yeah. uh, with, with the exception of maybe one or two. Wexford Kilkenny in Nolan Park, you'd be just hoping that that ha yeah that little bit of magic, that the championship magic comes alive and something happens that like you know Mick Jacob last minute and uh, yeah. you know no like yeah, it, and yeah. especially with that tail end of the championship because you haven't got 
a second opportunity. Like mm. most of the games at the end, you're going to have to win. Yeah. So I think you're going to see real intensity, real championship hurling. And you're not going to see some lacklustre hurling as we've seen over the last few weeks. Yeah. Which you can get yeah. in round robin, you know, because you don't have to win the first few, one or two games, you know. So I think towards the end, we'll see some rip roaring matches. And that, I expect that to be one of them, Wexford and Kilkenny. You might hopefully see the real Wexford then. Yeah, hopefully. With, yeah. The, real, with the real Wexford, please stand up. Yeah. One <laughs> of the, uh, from the weekend, um, I've been following, I've been following. Uh, Kildare's fortunes because I was doing a little bit with them uh, earlier on in the year and one of the things that surprised me about them um, talking to even David Herity who was managing them and describing he just listened to his description of some of the players and I don't know I didn't I didn't know any of the Kildare hurlers I don't know the male hurlers like I know Lee Keegan because of his association with football like and, and, and to, in some respects to my shame I don't and actually when I spoke to them and sat down with them I was like Jesus like there's a whole there's a whole world of hurlers here who I didn't know anything about, and their and their commitment and their passion for, and that, and that their commitment and their passion is 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 their, their capability. Like David Herity was describing one of them, like he was saying, he was describing him in the same legions as some of the Kilkenny hurlers, some of the great Kilkenny hurlers. Like you know, so it was it was surprising, um, a very nice surprise to get, and I've been so I've been following their fortunes, and they're going very well. Uh, Mayo, it's a. I was observing then what happened with Mayo and looking at the Mayo footballers and we all have been on, probably we've been on the right side of it uh, growing up, both with, you know, in your club. Sometimes it happens that the Camogie team don't get access or the football team don't get access to the main ground and there's this kind of question. But Mayo weren't weren't getting Mikhail Park and it was a little bit, uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a snub to the to the hurlers. But they're, they're looking at Derry now at the weekend. They both came off six or seven point wins. Um... Mayo, is it London? I think Derry beat London, was it? And Mayo, um, what is it? Sligo. Sligo by six. So that sets up the two of them now to, to have a crack at Kildare, who are kind of up at the top, waiting to be taken down. Um, yeah, what did you think of that, Michael? What's the have you been following it or? No, yeah, like, yeah, you see it. You see it. Obviously, like the games aren't shown, so you can't. Yeah. You just follow it online, but. I suppose like I'm from Dublin. It's the Dublin. It's football back. Like football was huge when I first started. So you know, Hurland's on the back burner in all these counties. Yeah. And then from living in Mead now, you see how honest the lads are and the lads who want to hurl. Yeah, it's everything to them. You know, it really is everything, and they give everything for their counties. And again, there's not much thanks for it. Like you go out and you could be in the end of hidings, or you don't get much support from the county boards. You're fighting for everything you have. But the opposite side of it is the la- the love of the game everyone has. Like you're not you're not you're not there because you're getting everything. You're there because you love it so much, you know. Yeah. And I I sort of loved that aspect of it. Like as the years went by, we were we were sort of given more now because we were more successful. Yeah. But for years there, when you're not getting anything, you're fighting for every scrap. You're fighting. Can I train on this pitch? Can can we get these facilities? Can we get what the footballers are getting? So we understand exa- exactly where they're coming from. It being there, you know, and um, t- it creates a hunger there. Yeah. you know, like a hunger to be to, to be to represent your county. So, um, look, it's great. Kildare, Kildare have been beating everyone, and it's, it's going to be a tough ask for whoever comes through that match to be to play against them. So, um, I I, I can't call it. I can't call who's going to play them. To be honest yeah, with you, yeah. so uh, you'd have to see more of the matches. To be honest with you, yeah, rather than reading yeah. up reports. Yeah, one of the things from talking to a couple of the players as well, and I think if 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 management leaves. Uh, in particular because you get a particular set up and you kind of commit to it and if things are going well in particular you follow it but one of the things that they were talking about um, which I don't think you would suffer as much for a Lee McCarthy team is turnover uh, like if, if a manager leaves four or five players might just take that opportunity to say well we don't know what's going to happen there's my opportunity I'm 24 I see my friends dotted all over the world I'm, I'm, they're, I'm looking at their social media feeds and I'm like jeez I'm here in the cold train in the middle of the winter and they're off living the high life and there's a, that that temptation to go seems to be it seems to be a lot stronger like there is the defiance that comes from the fight yeah. you know Rocky and Drago like you know you're not getting everything laid in the plate <laughs> you're having to fight for your corner um, <clears throat> and I was thinking of Sean Finn had a had an article uh, last week and he was talking about travel like he, he wanted to leave the Limerick set up and he kind of went for a couple of months and then realised when he was gone for a couple of months he said geez actually things things aren't that bad where, where I am and I want to be part of it is it First of all, very hard to develop a squad and a culture and a mentality if you've got that level of turnover that immigration builds. Um, the second thing is how did you deal with those questions? Did, did you have them during your career, like of 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 wanting to leave? Yeah, I suppose to answer your first question, uh, 
the turnover and that and I suppose counties that are outside the Liam McCarthy and even some most of them outside of Joe McDonough, you know, probably football predominantly orientated counties like, you know, the likes mm. of Mayo there, the issues they had at McHale Park. Um, you know, I've often been up there to different functions and things in Tyrone and Armagh hurling functions yeah yeah and Middletown these yeah. places like just insanely passionate they about just, it like. you can't they'd outdo any of us down mm. here down you know the more I suppose predominantly hurling counties you know as regards passion they just love it like and they tell you anything about any player any game that happened you know yeah. back over the years and it's just it's the same thing they come back to look to that they don't get the support maybe off the county board maybe it's all the money's being pumped into football and you know, they, they don't have the same resources, they don't have the same facilities as the, the football teams and that's tough, like, and then that leads on to what you're saying there is, like, you know, players might say, well, why am I hanging around for this? You know, we're not being treated the same, you know, and, uh, you know, that like, you, you couldn't blame a lot for 20, coming out of college. Like, I know, I know there's there's two or three players in Tipperary that could be on the panel, even the team this year, that opted to go travelling because they're coming out of their final year in college. They said this is their last opportunity because they have jobs to start in September, you know. Yeah. So like, and these lads are have been I've been top class underage players and in the club the last year or two. And you know, I know I know the lads in, in Tipperary wanted them to hold on, but the lads said, look, fair, fair play, I'm fair play to them. You respect them for saying, look, this is my last opportunity, a few months to get away. So you can see the other side of it as well. They have their whole lives ahead of them. They probably hope that they can represent their county for the next seven or eight years when they do come back. Yeah. Um. You know, I was t- I I I was thinking different when I was that age. All I wanted to do was hurl and play for Tipperary and play for my club, and I would have felt guilty if I didn't if I was given the opportunity and didn't take it. Yeah, you know yeah. that's the way I was, I suppose, primed anyway. But um, but look, it's it's the up- success breeds. It's it's a, it's an easier decision if the setup, if you and I think for and I think for the lads in in like in Kildare or Mayo or anywhere else as well, if. I think if you're part of a setup that you feel is going somewhere and things are gelling well, like it doesn't, I don't think it needs, and I, and I don't, you know, there's always a danger of, of being patronising with this, but I don't feel like it is. I feel like, you know, even with my club, if it was football and we weren't going, if if, if ever all the attention wasn't directed towards it, but if the, if there was something good there and the energy was good and the enthusiasm was there and everyone was part of something, like you, you really want to feel like you're part of something. I think that, that can keep you here. That's enough to keep you here because, I, I, yeah, I don't know, like sometimes people describe like getting up and working in labour and jobs and getting up at five o'clock in the morning. It's grand you're working in Australia, but to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go work in a building site or to be back here playing hurling, like I, I just, yeah, it was, didn't didn't seem like much of a... Yeah, you know, it's all well and good if you're going away for a few months to travel and that, but like if you have to go and try and earn some cash out there as well, like it's a lot yeah. different, but, you know, as you said there, if you can see something, a goal at the end of it or a prize at the end of it, this is this group is going somewhere or, you know, this manager, this coach is, is is starting to turn things around in our county that's not predominantly being taught as a hurling county. You'd say this is good this could be something special and we'll like you see even there at Antrim the last year or two with Darren Gleason, like he's turned their fortunes around and mm. you can see the enthusiasm growing up there and you know, like a lot of other counties like Antrim could have very good hurlers. It's just they're not probably getting the opportunity to develop them and, you know, show them what they what they, what they're made of. And you said there like David Herity doing great work in Kildare. Like there's probably hurlers there that are probably seeing like if I stick with this and stick with him, mm. we could we could like we could actually go up through the levels here and show what we're capable of. You know, so like um, but but definitely yeah. Like you know you can't. I suppose up to everyone to. I think the new structure of the the season where you're only going from January to. June or July yeah. is a big help as regards a, a player could say right if I give this all for six months five months the season's over it, I can do my bit of travelling then for the next half of the year or whatever like till the club are on to you till the club are on to you yeah but like <laughs> it, you know if, if <coughs> county that's means, condensed if, as well like yeah, so yeah if yeah. inter-county means that much you know at least it can say right whether it's before when I started out and probably you Mick as well and you as well dear me that you were going from November, December, and you if you were successful, you were going to end of August, start to fall in September. Like mm. that's a long time. Like it's mm. not giving you any window of yeah. opportunity. And then if you finish in August, you're club. back in. Then you have the club for a month or two, and then you're back in with the county again. Yeah. It's just a constant yeah. turn of it. Like whether it's now, there is that probably opportunity, the bigger window of for players to maybe say, right, I might get away for a few mm. months and. But that's the subtlety of the point with, 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 with Sean Finn, I thought, was that he t- he only went for two months. But he deci- he kind of he decided for early on, so he decided the first day, right, I'm gonna break away here for a little while and he broke away and then he had 
his moment after a couple of months where he said, do you know what, actually, I love this. Like, I'm going back to that. That's a great thing to be part of. I felt I played with a lot of players and observed a lot of players and still observe a lot of players who, because they've never asked the question, they kind of they talk about the sacrifice and they go through the, almost go through the motions of being an inter-county hurler. I don't see the the expression of joy yeah. that should come from playing the game because you love playing it. It's like you, it's because you played 14s and you were good and you played 16s and you were good and you're standing out with your club and it got minor and it got serious. You're in the 21s, you might have won a few games, everything's going good, you're all of a sudden you're a senior hurler and then you're 29 or 30 and it's like, okay, well, I've got a wife and kids now and I'm yeah. settled down I did, <laughs> and I never got away or something. And sometimes... It's just that opportunity and maybe a, a, a shortened season actually offers up uh, that kind of a thing. But I think it's crucial for every player to ask that question at some stage. And I don't think, I don't think they all do it. Like, I don't think many players do it really. Sometimes they're just like, why am I, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, do I, is it because I've chosen it or because it's chosen me? Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a subtlety, but I think that, that, that pointed it out to me very clearly, you know. Yeah, well, Sean Finn probably ran out of money and he <laughs> another two yeah. months, that probably had something to do with it. <laughs> no, I was more of an owl lad, to be honest with you. I just, the thoughts are going away and working in a bar and scrounging around for six months would kill me, you know, so it never entered my my mind now. Did it not, no. No, like, I... Sure happy I remember, here, sure, I remember one not. year now, I... I was under pressure from ourselves to go away during the year and we, we, ha- we were given a bye week one week just we were told we had no training at the start of the year and so I booked four days in Spain two of us and that changed that bye week changed then to a training weekend and I was like oh, I'm in work that weekend you know and I flew to Spain it was the worst four days ever I didn't sit in the sun once I had the phone off <laughs> so, yeah. God, they had about 100 missed calls from the manager like you know and I was like I, I was in Overtime all weekend, you know, it was nothing I could do, and I hated every minute of it. It's the worst thing I ever did, but go out of that. Yeah, plastic. honestly, I did. I, I, I was just, I regretted it so much, but uh, she had a great time, but I had a horrible time. So, um, yeah, that was the only time I tried to bolt off during the season, but I, I was very much. Geez, like, I was a devil for going <laughs> left, right, and centre. Oh, hey, yeah, I remember myself going quickly, went to Frankfurt one time for two or three days, and sure, we missed our flight as well <laughs> on the way back, and calling up, and I don't know, I was a, I was a father, a miler at the time, anyway, calling him up saying, Mr. Flight in Frankfurt and we were over like looking at property. <laughs> 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 this is in the good uh, 2007 yeah. when it was or 2006 it was a thing that people were actually doing like yeah. of course we were just uh, wanted a weekend so it's like the weekend off like just give yeah. us a weekend off it's eight months like why do I have to even def- why do I have to defend myself for wanting a weekend off I just have yeah. a bit of time off yeah. and I come back better for yeah. it I just need to I need to let loose a little bit yeah. you know because it's, it gets pent up and it gets tense and sometimes they just yeah if you could just take the week enjoy yourself tend to your relationship tend to your friendships or whatever and do yeah. that for a few days you come back then you're you're better for it you know mm. yeah but I think what I've seen over the years is lads like I would have been afraid of my life to go to a manager over my career and say can I uh, we have the weekend after like if if he finds out I'm going away for the weekend oh, to yeah. out foreign or something like straight away they're thinking I'm automatically thinking they're saying you're not looking after yourself. That's not what you should be doing. You're not recovering. But mm. like, you see professional rugby players through social media. I you see God, professional man. soccer players. As soon as they get a couple of days off, get away, refresh with their partner, whoever it is, you know, come back. And they're ready. as you said there, you're appreciated more the following week when you come back and mm. you'll be re- mentally refreshed. I think in the GA, there's a mentality there that's like, I can't ask, I can't ask to go away for a night here or, yeah. Do you know, or I can't ask to go away for a few. Um, I'm going away for can't a even, I can't, I can't even imagine you not being like you give of, like of of the majority of players, Polly. Like Jesus, you know, you were never found wanting in terms of effort, honesty, integrity. Like that, you couldn't. Do you know that you couldn't go and say like, look at, I, it's not even a question. Like, it's not even. I'm not. I'm not asking a question. I'm going for the weekend, and I see you on Tuesday. And if uh, I don't know, like maybe you don't want me back Tuesday, but I'm going because I have to go. I. It comes to comes down to trust. Derek Hall was talking about it last week. It comes down to trust, definitely. Like, but I mean, if you if you couldn't be trusted to do that, it's amazing that you'd have the inner monologue of thinking, "Jeez, he probably thinks I'm not doing it." Because you can be, I I can be sure of one thing is that every manager that managed you did wasn't thinking about you. They weren't thinking about you. They might have been thinking about other fellas, but they weren't thinking about you. Like, yeah, but maybe I don't. I suppose that could have been a per- person thinking it myself mentally. Mm. But like, jeez, mm. there's no way I was going to approach you know one of my managers and say. I'm going away there for the weekend to, you know, even going up to a soccer game in England or something. Like, he'd be like, geez, no, if he finds out, he'll think I'm going soft now or, you know, right. I'd be worried God, about, man. is it, will he play me the next day or, you know, what's going to happen? Like, so I just kind of left it <laughs> off and, 
you know, go for your game yeah, or go yeah, for absolutely. home or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, that's, that's just the way I, that's the way mentally I was thinking. Like, but yeah, again, but I think it's a GA thing that, you know, you're either all in there or you know, if I if I ask him to do this or can I go here? Can I go there for a night or? Yeah, you know, he'd, be, he'd be straight away. He'd be, he'd be come down in you know, a ton of bricks, like you know. So um, yeah, I just think I invited yeah. it all, and I said, wait till we were knocked out of the championship, or wait <laughs> yeah. till we got into the championship, and then enjoy yourself, you know, that kind of. Way. I, I I had that for early on in my career, definitely as well. But two that changed over two very particular incidents, and one was up in a pub in Kilkenny. I think on a Tuesday night, I definitely wasn't supposed to be up there on a Tuesday night, but I was up there on a Tuesday night anyway, and. Uh, there was about eight of the Munster rugby team they'd been playing at the weekend and they were in for a couple of pints now a couple of pints was a couple of pints to them they were in having you know three or four pints but they were singing and the crack was good but they were playing with Ireland I think on the Saturday yeah. and I I could recognise a few of the faces who I knew we were playing on Saturday as well and the other time I was in the Hall in the Wall pub up in, in Galway after uh, during the races and I don't know was it I kind of terrible on the jockeys, but anyway, the f- one of them who was fairly well known to be a wild child, like was hanging upside down from his legs and the rafters, high fiving people going by, full as a boot, and he was in a hundred thousand euro race the following yeah. day, like, and 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 there was no, there was nothing said. It was like, and I saw that with, with Kieran playing soccer. It was like, look at if you can run the hundred in ten seven on Saturday, and you can run the hundred in ten seven next Saturday, it's not really my business what you do in between. Whereas. Sometimes there's this overarching, overreaching yeah. arm into our lives that I thought yeah, could could chill, could chill a bit, like you know. And a bit of relief like, for me. The, you don't see GA teams going, especially in the county, for a few points because you're released. So like you might only get one month every one one weekend every eight weeks. You might get one night to maybe go out, and that's go bananas because. Yeah. And and it doesn't help with injury. It doesn't help with anything because it's your one night. Everyone goes out on the lash. All, all, till all hours and you, you might see a few more injuries than over the few weeks whereas if you're released a bit more and, and they to go for a yeah, few yeah. points and not go no, not go mental I think it, it would help players all around you know yeah, like, yeah. Now obviously some lads wouldn't listen and they'd go bananas every time you're allowed they're the ones who rule it for yeah, the rest yeah, exactly, of us listen but, uh, we could go on about this one for a while <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure uh, that's all we have time for um, Polly great to have you in studio again Michael pleasure uh, as well. well we'll get you back in to see uh, with the, 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 the big question yeah. in Leinster with Dublin and Wexford and see, see who comes through that's all we've got time for we're looking forward to another huge uh, weekend of championship games next weekend and we'll be back to recount and recap on all of that thanks very much for joining us Thank you.